Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Dear friends, welcome back. Yesterday we discussed about weight estimation by iterative process for electric powered propeller driven aircraft. At the same time we also discussed about how to perform, we started discussing about how to perform wing sizing. Right? So let us talk about that wing sizing in terms of landform geometry selection so we want this uav which is of a particular weight to fly at a particular velocity right so the whole idea during cruise is So the whole idea during cruise is lift should be is equals to weight and the thrust say acting in this direction should be equals to drag right. So if while calculating the thrust required we assume it depends upon L by D right W by L by D. So if you know this information at what L by D you are going to fly you will be able to figure out what is the corresponding thrust required. So when doing so, you also decide what is the lift at that particular, you know, during that particular phase of flight. Right. That means when you say lift, so you can also express the same as a non-dimensional parameter Cl which is 2 into L by rho S into V infinity square. Right. So that means for this particular L by D there is a particular say this is your design L by D there is a design CL. So design CL is considered a, as an input while performing this wing sizing. So we need to design say if this is my wing we need to design this wing to perform this particular cruise which is a major part of the mission. Right. So during cruise by the way, the weight of this wing is approximately 1.5 meters, one, sorry 150 grams and what is the span? Span if you can see is almost 1 meter span, it is a 1 meter span wing with a carbon fiber tube attached to it. Right. The whole setup weighs around 150 grams and say it is a rectangular wing you can see this is a rectangular platform right. So what is the chord of this wing and you can notice it is a symmetrical wing right with the symmetric cross sectional profile. The, the chord is approximately 23 centimeters right okay fine so how much weight or say the lift generated by this wing or this platform what is the weight that it can sustain right so let us look into that let us try to see whether can we get that answer from this approach or not right so this half rho v square s into c l is equals to w right. So s is equals to 2 times the weight of the uav into density into v infinity square into c l design right. 
So, CL design implies V cruise, right. So, V cruise is an input and the row cruise is a cruise altitude. So, generally the parameter W by S is known as wing loading, right. It decides the velocity of your cruise, all the velocities including takeoff, landing as well as, well as cruise velocities. So, selecting this particular parameter during this initiation of the design depends upon the uh, depends upon some conditions like whether you want to uh, you want to design a hand launch UAV or you want to ha design a UAV that takes off or take off within a short with a short run up or do you need a UAV which or if you are going to design a UAV which has to run throughout the runway like it will take a longer runway longer distance for takeoff. So, the kind of the type of UAV that you are going to design will help you to select the particular wing load, right. Say if you are select uh, if you want to design a wing um, hand launch UAV, the W by S ratio will be from 7 to 4, right. It is in kg per meter square. this is in kg per meter square, right. So, for a given weight where you can estimate the weight of the system, right, by just assuming the L by D, the weight breakup is already done, right. You know the design CL for the corresponding L by D and you know what is the cruise velocity and the altitude from the mission requirements, you will be able to estimate the what is the initial estimate of what is the platform area that is required, right. So, once you have this platform area, how to get the platform geometric parameters. So, what are the platform geometric parameters? For example, so we just measured the span of this wing, chord of this wing and we decide like we, we assume that this is a rectangular wing, why? The chord at each, and po each point remain, remain the same, right, it is, it is of same length. Say at the root it is of 0 0 0.23 meters, even at the tip it is the same. But say if there is a variation at the root and tip, variation in the quadrant at root and tip, then we call it as a taper wing, right. And then there can be a sweep and there can be a dihedral, right. The inclination of this wing with respect to horizontal is the dihedral, right. So, these are the wing platform geometry, para, geometric parameters. So, how to decide this? So, in this first, first in this approach we are going to talk about the wing platform geometry as a function of aspect ratio as well as taper ratio, right. So, assume an aspect ratio or from historical data base, right. So, what is this assumption or you can say consider an aspect ratio. So, how to consider? So, this aspect ratio majorly classifies the UAVs into three different categories. One is acrobatic UAV, one is conventional UAV or say which is of uh, say which is having a typical me medium velocity UAVs and acrobatic is one which can which is which has a high ve higher velocity and higher maneuverability right and medium velocity UAVs as well as glider UAVs right. So, where you want a long endurance higher endurance that means you need the minimum power requirement. So, the span should take care by itself right the span of the UAV should be sufficient enough to generate the lift at that particular altitude as well as the velocity and that velocity should consume the minimum energy. So, that means if you want to achieve a maximum endurance or the range long range right. So, then you go for a design which is close to a glider. So, long range 
long range uavs or generally a glider uavs is less long endurance uavs are also glider uavs where they fly at very less velocity compared to right so this aspect ratio classifies the type of uav that you are going to design right. so if this aspect ratio is anything greater than 15 you can consider it as a glider that UA, particular uav class belongs to a glider for all those UAVs which are having aspect ratio beyond 50. So anything between say 14 or 15 say till 8 can be a medium velocity UAVs like so it th their, their velocity of flight is higher compared to this UAVs. Right. So anything less than 8 is a low, at, low aspect ratio UAVs. Right. So, we also witnessed, so acrobatic UAVs you can say and delta wing UAVs the aspect ratio will be around, will be less than 4. Right. So, this classification you can figure it out from any of the conventional textbooks, anyways I will present a slide for this. Okay. Now, aspect ratio has to be considered as an input based upon the type of UAV you are going to select and you to, you have to iterate this aspect ratio change this aspect ratio and figure out what will be the corresponding wing loading right and taper ratio is also an input from historical database so once you have this aspect ratio and lambda taper ratio you will do, you will be able to figure out what is the platform geometry major part of the platform geometry right so what is aspect ratio so b square by s so corresponding span of the system will be so now you have the span of the wing yes aspect ratio times the area platform area or the reference area and we have lambda is equals to CT by CR, right? And what is the planform area as a function of lambda and span? B by 2 into CR into 1 plus lambda, right? So, what you have is CR is equals to twice the planform area divided by span into 1 plus. you will be able to identify or they have an initial estimate of the span of the u wing right at the same time by considering a lambda you will be able to figure out what is the root chord here now once you have the root chord what will be the tip chord ct is equals to cr into lambda so this particular parameter lambda will decide your tip chord as well here so you have the root chord, tip chord, span. So these are good enough to calculate the mean aerodynamic chord, right? So how to calculate the mean aerodynamic chord? Because ultimately we need to figure out what is the aerodynamic center of the wing, right? So how do you figure it? So that will be approximately 0.25 for a subsonic speed, like 0.25 to 0.2, 0.23 to 0.26 of C bar for subsonic aircraft. Right. So C bar is equals to two third C R into one plus lambda plus lambda square plus lambda. So you can analytically estimate the C C bar or the mean aerodynamic chord. With this C bar, you will be able to locate the aerodynamic center of this wing, right? Approximately 0.25 times of this aerodynamic, uh, mean aerodynamic chord. So, another information that you require is taper, right? So, this taper is happening about a particular axis. You need to know the axis of taper. should know what is the corresponding axis of your taper. Now, let us take a small example. Uh, 
select the platform geometry of a of a delta wing view weighs 3.5 kg delta wing view to cruise at a velocity of 20 meters per second 20 meters per second uh, right and a design cl so it is cruising at a design cl of 0.17 0.177 design cl of 0.177 the aspect ratio should be 2.89 8 9 8 so the aspect ratio should be 2.85 and a taper ratio of 0.5 right so this uav has to cruise at sea level right consider sea level rho is 1.225 kg per so this uav has to cruise at this particular altitude right where the density is 1.225 kg per meter cube now we have to select the platform geometry of this so first to figure out the platform geometry we need to know what is the area of the wing should be once you have the area based upon this aspect ratio lambda we can figure out the platform geometry of it w is equals to 3.5 kg which is 3.5 into 9.81 newtons so 34.33 newtons right okay and cl design is equals to 0.177 and the corresponding velocity is 20 meter per second so cruise velocity is given density is given 1.225 kg per meter cube right aspect ratio is given as an input so b square by s is equals to 2.85 right and taper ratio lambda ct by cr is equals to 0.167 right now let us figure out what is the area platform area required to start with right for cruise we have l is equals to w so cl or half rho v square uh, v cruise square density at cruise altitude of rho v square into s plan reference plan for made into design cl is equals to W. So the corresponding reference area is twice the weight divided by rho into v infinity square into CL design CL. This equals to two times. So substitute these values 34.33 newtons divided by 1.225 is a sea level density since we are flying at sea level so the corresponding velocity of flight is 20 meters per 20 meters square into CL design what is the design lift 
coefficient is 0 0.177. So, S is equal to 0.787 meter square. So, this is the planform area that you require to lift this weight at this flight conditions, right. If you want to design a UAV of this of weighing 3.5 kgs, right, with this parameters or the performance parameters, you have to have an area of 0.787 meter square. So, once you know the area. you can calculate what is the span of this unit. So, what is the span? Aspect ratio into S because aspect ratio is B square by S since E R is equals to B square by S. So, this implies the span of this UAV should be 2.85 into S is 0.787. This implies the span of this UAV is 1.5 meter square meters approximately. Okay. So, this should be approximately 1.5 meter span and the another, infor another information that you have here is uh, lambda C T by C R. Okay. So, we, I, we have area is equals to B by 2 into C R into 1 plus lambda. So, C r is equals to twice the reference area divided by span into 1 plus lambda. So, C r is equals to so C r is equals to 0.9 meters approximately which is twice 0.787 divided by 1.5 meters into 1 plus 0.167, right. So, the root chord is 0 0.9 meters. So, since we know the root chord, we can calculate by using this, by using the definition of taper ratio, we can figure out what is the corresponding tip chord. C t is equals to C r into lambda that is 0.9 into 0.167 is equal to 0 0.15 meters. Right. You have CT, you have CR, you have the span. Right. What will be the mean aerodynamic called? C bar is two third CR into one plus lambda plus lambda square divided by two third CR. 1 plus 0.167 plus 0.167 square divided by 1.167 meters is the approximately 61 centimeter. S is 0.787 meter square, D is 1.5 meters, CR is 0.9 meters. C t is 0.15 meters and C bar is 0.614 meters, right. So, to start with I have to draw 1.5 meters wing. This is one meter. This is this is half a meter. So I have one point five meters span here, right? So where what should be the root chord for this where it should be at 0.75. So, this is your 0.75 of it this is overall span is 1.5 meters 0.75 and have C r as 
0.9. So, assuming this is perpendicular, like this line is horizontal, and I made this face perpendicular to it, I have. So, this is my root chord, right. Yeah, join the leading edge of root chord in the tip chord, all you have is a delta wing, right, of 1.5 meter span and CR of 0.9 meters, 0.15 meters of tip chord, right. So, since in the question it is mentioned it is a delta wing, we directly tapered it about the trailing edge. Otherwise, we need to know the axis about which it is tapered, right. Okay. So, tapered is about trailing edge, that means the trailing edge of this root chord and the trailing edge of the tip chord should lie in the same along the same line, right. So, this is the planform geometry and we will show the flight test of this particular design, particular UA, right. Okay. Now, what should be the mean aerodynamic chord of this? What is the mean aerodynamic chord of this particular platform? So, we have C bar is equals to 2 third C r 1 plus lambda by square by 1 plus lambda that is 2 third. What is C r? 0.9 into 1 plus 0.167 plus 0.167 square divided by 1.67. This is this is 0.614 meters, right. This is 6, 614 meters. Now, let us see what is this 614 meters. So, what is the mean aerodynamic chord? It is a chord at a particular location where your chord length is 0.614. So, where it is? Point six one four approximately. Okay, this is the mean aerodynamic chord in my case. So, in this particular case, this is the mean aerodynamic chord, which is is 61.4 centimeters. Okay. This is a mean aerodynamic chord, right. So, similarly, you will have a mean aerodynamic chord this side. What will be, what should be the location of that? Y of mean aerodynamic chord is equals to B by 6 into this is 0 0.2857 meters or 0.286 meters is 28.6 centimeters, right, is it? So, this is this is full scale, right, it should be almost equal to the same. So, see it is approximately 28 centimeters from here, right. So, project this onto the root chord, project this MAC. Similarly, you will have mean aerodynamic chord this side as well, right. So, you project it onto the root chord. So, finally, this is going to be your mean aerodynamic chord. So, in this case for a delta wing, since the trailing edge of root chord as well as the tip chord lies on the same line, right, you can easily locate the aerodynamic center. So, x a c is equals to c r minus minus of C t or C bar, right, C r minus C bar plus 0.25 C bar. What does it mean? What I am doing here? I am subtracting this mean aerodynamic chord from the total chord of this configuration or the root chord of this configuration, right. That means, what you have is this length, right. So, plus I need to know what is the corresponding aerodynamic chord, 
uh, I mean aerodynamic center for so the aerodynamic center here is 0.25 of this C bar that is a quarter chord of the C bar. So, this is my 0.25 C bar. So, what is what is 0.25 C bar of this? So, X A C with respect to C bar right is equal to leading edge of the C bar is 0.15 meters that is 15 centimeters from here. bit down here it should be. So, this is your this is 15 centimeters 0.15 centimeter. So, 0.15 meters is from the leading edge of this C bar. Right. So, to f find out so to measure this it will be difficult right you do not know physically where this C bar will present. So, it is easy to mark this aerodynamic center with respect to the leading edge of the root chord right. So, what you need to do you need to add this distance plus this distance right. So, to get this distance you need to subtract C bar from the root chord right say this is your C bar okay. subtract this from the root chord you get C bar minus uh, C r minus C bar plus this distance it is a quarter chord point of C bar. So, this is going to be C bar minus C r minus 0.75 C bar. So, this is approximately 0.4395 meters which is 44 centimeters so, approximately 44 centimeters. So, it should be so you can simply have a tape and measure the corresponding mean aerodynamic uh, or the aerodynamic center of this configuration which should be approximately at 44 centimeters from the leading edge of this root chord right. You can look at it physically right. These are the two UAVs that we have just I mean with the same plan form what we have discussed. So, one is a flat plate configuration the other one is a reflex wing configuration that means the profile is a rectangular cross section here for the first co configuration and the second one is with a reflex aerofoil cross section. Uh, the aerofoil that is used here is NACA 23110. Okay. So, let us witness the flight test of these two configurations.
ਰੱਬ ਦਾ